Okay, so you've got your claw bot done with all your motors on. What do you do next? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is in Schoology, we are going to download the claw bot code onto our computer. Then, once I have it downloaded, I'm going to open it in Robot C. Now, very important you don't click on Graphical Robot C, but Robot C for VEX Robotics. And once I got it open, I'm going to go to Open File and go and find in my downloads, which in my case was called Leonard Complete, um, named after our class robot, Lenny, and hit Open. And you'll notice that I get a bunch of error messages. And that is because my language isn't set up properly. So if I go up here to robot, and I go to platform type, in VEX Robotics, I can change it to VEX 2.0. And that took away a lot of the error messages, but it's still not done. I need to do one more thing. I'm going to go to robot, platform type, and now make sure I select natural language PLTW. And if I do both those things, now my code will work just fine. If you don't know how to read all of this code yet, don't worry, I'm going to help you out a little bit, but you also don't need to know how to read everything. The first thing you need to know is you do not need port 6 and port 7. You don't need a clamp motor 2 or a clamp arm 2. That is for our class robot that just happens to have two claws. If you build a claw bot with two claws, then the code is already there for you to make the second claw work. What do you need to be aware of? Port 2 will be the right wheel system. Port 3 will be the clamp arm. Port 4 will be the clamp motor. And port 5 will be the left wheel system. And once again, we won't worry about port 6 and port seven and all of these ports are set up with like port two and port five are set up with vex channel two and vex channel three what does that mean if we go back to our image mate if we look at our controller channel two is the right side and channel three is the left side going up and down so as i go up and down on my joystick that it will affect the right wheel system in vex robotics so if we look Port 2 is affected by channel 2. So basically, as I go up and down on channel 2, then my motor will go forward and back on the right wheel motor system. And this is more or less how it works. You can see that button 6 up is associated with port 4. What did port 4 do? Well, it made the clamp motor open and close. Well, what is the clamp motor doing? Well, if we look back, the clamp motor is this motor on this clamp. It's going to make this open and close. If you look at your uh, joystick, 6 is going to be up and down right here. Here's 6 up and here's 6 down. So as I go up, the motor will open and as I hit down, the motor will close. Like so. What do we do with this information? Well, we need to start plugging in our motors into our cortex here. Now, you can't just plug your motors directly in. If you look, your motors will only have two prongs on them, and your motor ports will actually have three prongs. And so to make a conversion, we use something called a motor controller 29. It looks like this. So you plug your motor into the two ports like so, and then you can now plug in the three ports into the motor inputs here. Okay, now your Cortex probably comes with this little tiny piece um, right here. And your, your Cortex should be screwed onto the system. This thing, this little piece should pop right out. And it's just kind of in the way. It's used for something, but I find it causes more problems than it solves. So you can pop that out. And... You could now, in theory, start plugging in your motor controller 29s that are connected to each of your VEX motors into the various ports. And it's obvious which side goes in because there's a little indention right here that goes along with these indentions right here on the side. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about here. You can see these little tiny indentions here. The indentions on the motor controller 29 tells you 
So I'm going to plug the white side in towards the word motor, just like this. Now, how do I know which ports to plug in and which ones not to? Well, that's where my code comes in. If we look back at my code, it tells us the right wheel motor will go into port 2. And so if I go back, the right wheel motor is right here. It's coming into my right wheel. I connect it to a motor controller 29. And then I plug that motor controller 29 into port 2. And I make sure it goes in the right port, in the right holes. And how do I know it's port 2? Well, it says port 2 right there on the left. Okay. And then I do the same thing for, let's go back. Port 3 is the clamp arm. And so that's not the clamp motor, that's the clamp arm. And so if we go back, clamp motor is on the end of the claw. The clamp arm is the motor that's attached to the arm, making it turn up and down. So I got to take that motor right here and find my motor controller 29 coming off of it. It looks like it's this one right here. And that will go into port 3. If we go back, the clamp motor itself goes into port 4, and the wheel left goes into port 5. So we'll find the clamp motor, and here it is. I will plug it into port 4, and then I will take the left wheel motor here. and the motor control 29 coming off of it and plug that into port five. And so I've got all four plugged in here, you can see. And so now they're all plugged into the right place, connected to the code. Now the question is, is how do I get this code on this Cortex? And the answer is, I use my orange USB. That should have came with my Cortex and I plug in one end of the USB into the Cortex itself, and I plug the other end into my computer. Now, that's not going to do me any good without a battery. Once I plug it in, you should see the lights come on, but you'll see one green light and one red light, and that's not enough. We also need to hook in this battery and it should be obvious which side goes in it's shaped pretty obviously you can see the little ridge on the top there that goes in facing up on the cortex which in my case is not pinned down but it's kind of nice because it allows us to see what we're plugging into it plugs in right here on the front end of the cortex and then I'm going to find the on switch on my cortex right next to where I plug it in and turn it on, and you should see both lights turn green. And you might have a hard time seeing this over the camera, but now that I have the battery on, both lights are green, and I have it connected to my computer through this orange USB here. I should just be able to compile this code and download it to my robot. Now, if you have an error message, you just need to do a firmware download and just hit OK. It should go very fast. And hit OK. And then just compile program and download it to your robot. And that's it. I can now close out this debugger window because I shouldn't need it. And the code is now on my Cortex. But that's not enough. I also need it on my controller. Now, my controller needs to have six AAA batteries. To get the batteries out, you need a VEX Allen wrench. And you just got to take out one little screw here. Then this should pop off. And you can see I already have six AAA batteries. There actually are VEX rechargeable AAA batteries that comes with your VEX kit. So you don't have to go and get new AAA batteries. 
So this should slide right back in, and then I can screw it back in for security reasons. And so here's what I do. I unplug my robot from my computer, and I turn off my Cortex. So there's no lights. I plug the other end of my USB into my controller. And then I turn on my Cortex while they're connected. And I turn on my controller as well while they're connected. And you just give it a second to transfer the code from the Cortex to the controller. And once it's connected, I should be able to hit buttons. So we said the clamp motor or the clamp arm for example, and I know this isn't the best view to see all this, but the clamp motor is connected to 8 up and 8 down if we look back at our code. the clamp. So we said earlier the clamp arm is connected to port 3. And port 3, if you look, is connected inside of button 8 up and 8 down. So if we look back, while it's connected via orange USB, if I hit 8 up and 8 down on my controller, you'll see the arm lift up and down. If I hit six up or six down, you'll see my clamp motor open and close. If I hit up on two, you'll see the right wheels wanting to spin. If I hit down, you'll see the right wheels wanting to go the other direction. I hit up on the left wheels, you can see those wheels wanting to go up and down. Now, if anything's going backwards, all you have to do is to fix it is find, like let's say this was going backwards, let's say my right motor, when I pushed up, it went down. I would find my right motor where it plugs into the motor controller 29, and I would just flip it backwards, and it would work better. Now, if I hit it, because I just flipped it backwards, as I hit up on my joystick, you'll see it goes backwards. If I hit down, it goes forwards. Okay, that means I have it backwards now, so I'm going to flip it back the way I had it. And so now it should work fine, and I'll make that correction anywhere else I want. Now, the only silly part here is, well, it's, it's a wired connection. It's not wireless. But we can actually fix that, too, now that we've set it all up. And how do we fix it? Well, you have to get two of these USBs, these VexNet USB uh, Bluetooth connectors. But you have to make sure they have a matching serial number on the back. If you get the two with a matching serial number on the back then what I can do is unplug my orange USB from the Cortex and the controller and plug in the matching USBs into the Cortex and my controller. And you give it a few seconds to let them connect. You should see lights start flashing blue on both. And I'm having some issues, so I'm going to turn my controller off and back on and let it try to connect. You'll see it's trying to connect. It's trying to find it. The lights are blinking. But now I've got all green lights. You can see it's wirelessly connected. But my buttons work. I can lift up my claw bot. I can drive it forward and back. And it works fantastically. And that's all there is to it, to making it work.